From iconic Jedi to devious mutants to legendary action heroes, Hollywood history is awash with cancelled origin stories. But why were these projects shelved and did we really need them in the first place? Today, X-Men Origins Wolverine is a widely derided punchline, one whose largest legacy is inspiring the radically different creative direction the franchise took for The Wolverine and Logan. Initially, however, there were plans by 20th Century Fox to use this project as a way to kick off a whole series of X-Men Origins movies. Wolverine was the first mutant to get a prequel adventure, but there were originally plans for Magneto to headline a feature in the series too. In April 2007, it was announced David S. Goyer was to helm a Magneto movie, building off a script penned by Sheldon Turner. Of course, Magneto wasn't a surprising pick for those familiar with the original trilogy of X-Men movies. Not only was he a prominent part of those films, but he also has a very well-known origin story filled with more than enough drama to hold up an entire superhero flick. The project even got far enough to inspire original portrayer Ian McKellen to express interest in returning to the role in some capacity. However, growing interest in a potential X-Men First Class movie led Fox to change directions, taking many of the ideas dreamed up for the Magneto movie and incorporating them into an ensemble prequel film. Peace was never an option. The negative critical reception to X-Men Origins Wolverine was simply the last straw for Fox's X-Men Origins series. The internet is largely aware of the unmade Hellboy 2, the Golden Army follow-up, Hellboy 3, a passion project for director Guillermo del Toro that never found proper financing. Less well-known is another extension of the Hellboy franchise that was once proposed at the start of the 2010s. Rather than pursuing Hellboy 3, distributor Universal Pictures wanted to kick off a whole series of movies entitled From the Files of the BPRD, referring to the government organization that employs Hellboy and his supernatural chums. Screenwriter Peter Briggs explained on Facebook that this series would have kicked off with a prequel film chronicling the earlier exploits of the Golden Army villain Prince Nuada. This project would have gone back in time and followed Nuada long before he fought Hellboy as he navigated various major real-world conflicts. This movie was actually in active development on two separate occasions, with Universal showing great interest in the project both times. However, Briggs revealed that it was unceremoniously cancelled once the 2019 Hellboy movie was announced, leaving Prince Nuada's prequel in the dust. When Disney first bought Lucasfilm, the company's bigwigs decided they wanted to produce more than just a new trilogy of Star Wars films. They also planned to expand the franchise into a series of spin-off movies called Star Wars Stories. The first of these, Rogue One, dropped in 2016 and was a roaring success, but the anthology movie approach to Star Wars was paused when the second installment, Solo, underwhelmed financially. At one point, however, this master plan was set to include a solo movie for none other than Jedi Master Yoda. In August 2017, The Hollywood Reporter revealed that a movie based on Yoda was being contemplated by Lucasfilm Brass. No further details ever emerged on this proposed Yoda movie, such as a potential creative team or what the story might have involved. Given that Yoda has lived for hundreds of years in the Star Wars universe, there are untold amounts of stories that this potential feature could have covered. However, the ensuing decision to table future anthology films made a Yoda origin film redundant, as did The Mandalorian's focus on the character of Grogu. 2007's Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer debuted the first ever big screen version of the Marvel Comics icon known as the Silver Surfer. Portrayed by Doug Jones physically and Lawrence Fishburne through voiceover, his appearance in the Fantastic Four sequel was just the beginning of a long-lasting cinematic career for the surfer. 20th Century Fox even sought to spin this incarnation of the character off into his own solo movie. The studio had long been interested in launching Silver Surfer as a solo franchise, with Andrew Kevin Walker working on a screenplay as far back as July 2000. However, it took Rise of the Silver Surfer to really get the gears moving. In February 2008, less than a year after that film's release, screenwriter J. Michael Straczynski revealed at a WonderCon panel that a new Silver Surfer film would explore the character's origins and feature the debut of a comics-accurate version of Galactus. 
Over Thanksgiving 2009, Straczynski reached out to IGN personally to reveal that his version of The Silver Surfer was on pause thanks to Fantastic Four's disappointing box office performance. But he also noted that a new take on the Surfer's story was in development. This incarnation of the project never went forward either, however, thanks partially to Fox shifting its focus to a full-on reboot of Fantastic Four. And we all know how that went. Say that again? It's fantastic. Yes, it is. After a good day to Die Hard took the Die Hard movies to a whole new low in terms of critical reception, it seemed like it was time to drastically shake up the franchise. Such a bold move emerged through a project entitled McLean, which was meant to explore John McClane's life as a cop in the 1970s. The idea was to introduce a younger version of McClane, though the film wouldn't entirely do away with the previous installments either. Producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura told Empire, We are going to explore John McClane in his 20s, but just as prominent is the 60-year-old version. With this story structure firmly established, updates on the screenplay for McClane emerged as late as 2019. But the Disney-Fox merger saw every title at 20th Century Fox thrown into chaos, including McLean. By July 2021, the news had come down that the movie was no more. Bonaventura has explicitly blamed the Disney-Fox deal for the production's demise, leaving this origin story as little more than a fantasy of diehards most diehard fans. The Rambo franchise really does seem impossible to kill. Thanks to 2008's Rambo and 2019's Rambo Last Blood, Sylvester Stallone's iconic character has stuck around even through the changing movie landscape of the 21st century. Hot on the heels of Last Blood, Stallone revealed that he'd figured out a way to keep the character going for just a little longer, via a prequel chronicling the early years of John Rambo. During an interview with Screen Rant, Stallone mentioned that he hoped a Rambo prequel might eventually happen and continued, I always thought of Rambo when he was 16 or 17, that he was the best person you could find. He was the captain of the team, he was the most popular kid in school, super athlete, he was like Jim Thorpe, and the war is what changed him. If you saw him before, he was like the perfect guy. Despite Stallone's enthusiasm for this project, there have been no further updates on a Rambo prequel. Part of that is likely due to the global box office performance of Rambo Last Blood, which came in below the worldwide gross of its predecessor. And with this apparent lack of momentum, it could be that Rambo's enduring big screen presence has finally come to an end. In that long period between Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, and Superman Returns, Warner Brothers went through countless concepts for what a new Superman film could look like. One of those proposed projects was Superman Flyby, which would have once again tackled the famous origin story of the Kryptonian superhero. The production started under the stewardship of Brett Ratner before transitioning over to McGee, with both filmmakers sharing a goal of relaunching the character for a new era of superhero movies. For a moment, this cursed production seemed to be moving along too, until Variety reported that it suddenly wasn't. The disruption occurred when McGee stepped down from the project. Empire reported creative disputes between McGee and Warner Brothers were to blame for this development, with these issues culminating in a disagreement over where to film the movie. McGee would later clarify that it was specifically his fear of flying that clashed with Warner Brothers' desire to film in Australia, leading to him losing out on the gig. Eventually, Brian Singer would step in to direct Superman Returns, which went in a radically different direction with the story, not only by skipping a retelling of Superman's origins, but also in creating a spiritual sequel to Richard Donner's 1970s take on the character. In the wake of Batman and Robin's critical and financial failure, Warner Brothers decided to take the Batman series in a brand new direction. Holy chutzpah! Specifically, the studio was interested in a gritty new origin story. Hiring Darren Aronofsky in 2000 to direct a film adaptation of the Frank Miller comic Batman Year One, aiming for an R rating and developing its own storyline rather than slavishly devoting itself to the comic, Batman Year One was shaping up to be a unique chronicling of Batman's first few months as a crime fighter. 
Unfortunately, by 2002, Aronofsky's take on year one had been passed over by Warner Brothers Brass in favor of a proposed Batman and Superman movie. Another element that led to the demise of year one was dispute over casting. Aronofsky wanted Joaquin Phoenix to inhabit the lead role, while Warner Brothers chose Freddie Prince Jr. for the part. Ironically, while Batman Year One fizzled out, a gritty take on Batman's early days as a superhero would eventually be told by Christopher Nolan with 2005's Batman Begins. Not to mention The Batman, the next adaptation of The Caped Crusader, which borrows heavily from Batman Year One. Channing Tatum's name has been thrown around for the role of Gambit for well over a decade. But in the 2010s, he finally got serious about developing a Gambit movie. In 2015, Tatum told Empire that the first draft of the screenplay had been completed and that it would take a subversive approach to the superhero origin story. Though things sounded promising, Gambit took a discouraging detour when director Rupert Wyatt departed the project shortly before filming was set to begin. From there, the project was plagued by multiple release date delays and saw both Doug Liman and Gore Verbinski stepping into the director's chair, only to later leave. By January 2019, Tatum's commitment to the project was taken to a new level when Deadline reported that the actor was interested in directing the troubled production himself. Unfortunately, Tatum never got the chance to even lobby Gambit's origin story. In March 2019, Disney closed its purchase of the film's distributor, 20th Century Fox, which handed the character back to Marvel Studios. Two months later, Gambit was officially dead, bringing Tatum's relentless pursuit to an unhappy end. Universal was so convinced that its 2017 take on The Mummy would successfully springboard the so-called Dark Universe franchise that the studio greenlit a second installment, Bride of Frankenstein. The movie was to be directed by Bill Condon, who previously helmed a movie about original Bride of Frankenstein filmmaker James Whale called Gods and Monsters. This new take on the origins of that famous monster was rumored to star Angelina Jolie as the titular creature with Javier Bardem officially signed on to portray Frankenstein's monster. While the project assembled some buzzy lead actors, this new Bride of Frankenstein soon hit an insurmountable roadblock. The exceedingly disappointing box office returns delivered by The Mummy immediately cast a dark shadow over the whole dark universe. Four months after The Mummy debuted, the start date for Bride of Frankenstein was delayed and the project was sent straight back to development hell. Two years later, Condon revealed to Collider that Universal's trepidation over the budget and scope of Bride of Frankenstein also contributed to its cancellation. Now, Condon's movie and the Dark Universe as a whole appears to be very much dead and buried. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.